if you've got a cell phone or a some pager or something like that, please turn that off uh, or, or at least mute um, or vibrate. Um, the information we're going to be going over, we just no need uh, disrupting the, uh, the, the group here as we go over some information. And here's what I want you to do. We've flown in one of the top executives in the country, and uh, he's uh, one of the, an excellent trainer, excellent trainer in the, in the company. He's sought out and travels all over the United States in behalf of, of prepaid legal and training in behalf of prepaid legal. And here's what I know is that you're going to grab some nuggets out of today. And uh, if you don't, that's, uh, that's a mistake, okay? You should be able to get a nugget out of the training, every single training, and something you can take home and be able to apply in your own personal business that will help you take your business to the next level. So anyway, what I want to do is, um, uh, without waiting anymore, let's go ahead and introduce our, our, our uh, guest trainer and, and presenter today. Um, this is a gold executive director, which means uh, he has helped three other organizations achieve the highest executive position in our company. And um, it also means that he has a lot of passive and residual income. All right? Um, he's uh, is one of our top income earners. Um, he is a, uh, you know, like I said, he's one of my favorite trainers in the company. He has a very, very um, unique way to be able to share uh, the concepts of how to build a successful business in prepaid legal services. And that's none other from Arizona, Mr. Travis Alexander. Good man. Well, good evening. Good evening. You are a cheery bunch. I appreciate you, uh, you being here. Um, by show of hands, uh, who was here a year ago when I when I spoke? Okay, so about half this this part of the room. You guys were not. <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you guys for uh, sticking around. Um, I'm, uh, I'm really happy to be here. And matter of fact, the conversation to get me here was about 15 seconds long. Um, I, I lived in Colorado for two years, about 10 years ago. And um, I was just mentioning before the, the training today that out of all the places I've lived, this is by far my favorite place of all. And, and I, I truly do love it here. I love it because of the scenery. I love it because of the people. It's just a special place to be. You guys are very fortunate um, to live here. And when I move again, um, and that may be more sooner than later, it'll be back to Colorado. So maybe I may be in your midst soon. So, um, But then I won't be as cool. You know, because then, you know, when I'm here all the time, you guys are like, oh, it's just Travis, you know, so. <laughs> Mr. Alexander when I live in Arizona, but I'm Travis here. Um, I, you'll, you'll have to excuse me. I had just spent all day uh, skiing. Uh, that's why I'm burnt. I look like a, a bottle of Grey Poupon that, that <laughs> just sat out in the sun for a while. But uh, if you look at, at Mr. David Hughes, uh, he, he looks like he got... Uh, set on 98% of his body got set on fire, uh, but it missed his forehead. So uh, he uh, he had a beanie on, and uh, you know. So I guess I got more burnt, but I don't look near as silly as you do. So, but uh, a great guy, and I appreciate him uh, taking me out. And uh, you know, the funny thing is, and I'll talk a little bit more about the skiing uh, later. You know, we all have our strengths. And uh, we certainly all have our weaknesses. And uh, <laughs> as good or as, you know, it's, it, let me just put it to you this way. Skiing is a weakness of mine. And uh, <laughs> I, ma I made a, I uh, came with, you know, pants that were suitable for skiing. And I thought, well, I'll just, I'm leaving tomorrow. I need to pack light. I'll just wear these pants, um, and I'll wear them tomorrow at the airport. Well, that's not going to happen because uh, I ripped the, 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 like from here to here. There's just a gigantic hole that for half the day I'm just skiing around half naked. So, um, so interesting times. It's cold. So, uh, but but nonetheless, uh, a, a lot of fun. And I also want to apologize. I did not go to bed last night. Um, and I slept two and a half hours the night before, and uh, then the sunburn and this and that. So, if I if I just if I doze or go off into some different place for a little while, just wake me up. But I'll do my best to to, to stick with you. I cannot believe I'm awake right now. Uh, I I haven't done much sleeping lately, so uh, I'll get plenty of that tonight. So, but I appreciate you guys. There's a lot of things that you could be doing right now. 
Um, how many of you, the Nuggets are in the playoffs, for example. I don't know if they're playing tonight. No. Um, they're not, okay, well good. That, I guess that's good for me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's Thursday night's a good night for TV, so on and so forth. Um, but as, as big, I'm a Suns fan, yeah, and I'm a, and as much as I like the Suns, and I like Steve Nash, and Amari Stoudemire, and we have Shaquille O'Neal now, and all that good stuff. Um, and as tempted as I may be to, to go watch the game rather than come to my trainings or my briefings, you know, um, and it's just an interesting thing. P thousands and thousands of people will go to watch someone throw a ball in a hoop or, or to watch a guy run down a field as other people chase him and we'll cheer and we'll cheer and we'll cheer. And there's people that, that aren't here and miss briefings and trains because they're there cheering for those people. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy uh, the sport just as much as any, anybody. But uh, are those people cheering for us? <laughs> Is Carmelo Anthony cheering for you to go get an exposure? No. no. Is Allen Iverson just stoked out of his mind every time you get a new recruit? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely not. You know, that, you know, you got to give them some credit because they've, they've achieved success. Um, they certainly, financially, they're doing just fine. And so good for them. Um, but however, you know, we are in the process still. And so I guess I tell you that because you made a decision to be committed to that. And just like anyone that's succeeded in anything in life, no, no one's story, you'll never read a book, You'll never uh, or hear the success story from any type of stage, stage where an individual goes, well, you know, I, my journey began and I kind of did a few things here and there and I sh showed up to a few things here and there and I read, I read a couple books but usually I didn't finish um, and I got a lot of rejection and most of the time I quit. And then I became ind independently wealthy and a millionaire and life's great. Okay? You never hear that. <laughs> what you hear is, I struggled. I worked hard, and I, and, and I fell on my face. There was times when I didn't want, to, didn't want to do it anymore. There's times when I just wanted to quit. There's times when I um, questioned my own abilities. There's times when people in my life really put the pressure on and told me I was wasting my time. The dream stealers. And, uh, but they, but the, all the successful people in the world they fought through those things. And uh, here we are, and I don't know most of you, but we're on the journey. And uh, we're all at various levels of success in life. Some of us are very happy with where we're at. Some of us are very dissatisfied. But we're all on the journey. And uh, I, want you to, I want to let you know that that in and of itself is something to take honor in. Because most people choose not to take the journey. Most people will sit and, uh, and blame President Bush for the reason why their life is mediocre. They'll blame Dick Cheney or Condoleezza Rice uh, for the reason why they don't have a big fat paycheck. Why they have too much month at the end of the money. And I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, Barack Obama, and I'm not going to get political, and I'm not endorsing any candidates. I, I, I've never once, and I always mean to do this, I've never got on a stage and haven't talked about politics or religion, two things that are very taboo. But I'm going to, uh, I'm talking, last, last time I was here, it was, it was uh, religion, and this, this time it's going to be politics. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I, uh, Barack Obama, I don't know how he'll be as a president. I don't know much about him. But I will tell you this, what I do know about him is he's an amazing marketer. Yeah. And, I'll t and I'll just, all I have to say is this, what's his slogan? Change we can count on. Doesn't that just feel good? Change we can count on. And so he'll go and there'll be a bunch of people at a rah-rah for Barack Obama. Again, I don't know the man. I'm not saying he's great, I'm not saying he's evil, I don't know him. Um, and he'll get up there and he'll talk about change we can count on. And then people will clap, and they'll cheer, and they'll throw the signs up, Barack for president, Barack 08, whatever. 
because there's because they're sitting there and he's saying, bless his heart, elect me and things are going to change. And, and people are sitting there and, go, and going, you know, Barack's going to make some changes and my life's going to be better. Go Barack. Well, you know, that sounds great. You want to know why? Because we don't have to do anything. Vote for the guy. That's all they tell you. Just vote for me. I'll fix everything. You know, you know what? You know what George Bush talked about when he got elected? Change. Mm -hmm. You know what Bill Clinton talked about change. when he got elected? Change. The, the, the senior Bush? Change. Reagan? Change. Carter? Change. And so on and so forth. Change, change, change. And for some people, things have changed. Yeah. And for some people, nothing has changed. But you know what the variable was? It wasn't who was the president of the United States. It was them. Jim Rohn, I'm sure many other people have said it too, but Jim Rohn is the first person I heard say it. For things to change, you have to change. That's right. You have to change. Not Barack Obama. If you want change, you can count on. The only person you can count on is the man or woman in the mirror. And whatever Barack Obama does is, is good for Barack Obama. And you can blame President Bush for getting laid off. You know, people that work really, really hard, the people that just make themselves, where you, there's, there's people that, regardless of the economy, will always have a job. Because they, they always go the extra mile. Have you ever heard the, the, the phrase, there's no traffic jam on the extra mile? Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Most people won't do more. Your ability to have success in life is determined by your ability to separate yourself from the masses. That's right. And the more success you'll have will be determined by how much you separate yourself from the masses. The more you separate yourself, the more success you'll have. And so when we sit here in the masses and just root for some guy, just like we root for the Denver Nuggets, like it really matters if they win. It doesn't. You know what? I, I would root for the I'd root for the Suns a whole lot more if if they won the NBA championship, I got one of my mortgage bills paid. <laughs> but you know, after it's all said and done, you know, I'm I've got a fistful of chips and guacamole, and I'm high fiving my buddies. <laughs> and then I wake up the next morning, nothing is different. Nothing's different. Doesn't matter how good they are. Doesn't matter how hard they work out in the gym. Nothing's different. If you want a better life, you have to make decisions that will get you a better life. And so the reason I say all that is while there's people talking about change we can count on for Barack Obama and blaming President Bush for their miserable lives, you're here. You're here and you've made a commitment. You've made a decision to change. You've made a decision to do what most people won't do. You've made a decision to separate yourself from the masses. And so just by process of elimination, you're in a much better spot than most everyone else around here. Now you could say, well, hey, there's, there's a lot of people outside you know, this door is the day to make commitments there at home watching Lost or The Office or whatever's on TV tonight. My name is Earl. Um, yeah, white trash show of the century. Um, you're going to learn a lot from that. Um, but see, we're in the, but it's the process. And right, right, make this one of your first notes. Fall in love with the process. You could write this right next to it. Joy in the journey. Now, the, now the, the Hughes twins in the back are freaking out because I'm supposed to be talking about the Ten Core Commitments right now. Um, and I will, and, I, uh, and I'll go through it quick, and then I'll do some advanced training a little later on. But um, most of you have heard of those, and so we can go through. You'll just you're basically just going to get my insight in this, on on these things. But um, uh, but you're you're this is this is you're going to look back when you've succeeded in prepaid legal services in life. And you'll look back at times like this as the best times. Uh, enjoy yourself. Be happy with where you're at. You know, and it's the struggles, and it's the difficulties, 
and it's the dream stealers, and it's all the ebbing and flowing, uh, the waxing and the waning, that makes us who we are. You know, it, it's, it wouldn't be fair to us if we came in here and every one out of every 10,000 people that signed an app just became a $100,000 ringer. It wouldn't be fair to that person to just be given $100,000 every year. Because the money, you know, let, me just, let me just take the, the Hughes twins, for example. You can take prepaid legal away. End it. No, no more need for legal services. Identity theft no longer exists. There's just no need for our product. That's never going to happen. Let's just to say that all of a sudden that did happen. We lived in a utopic society where no one broke the law. Um, you know what it would do to them? Nothing. Not a darn thing. Because, yeah, they've made a lot of money in prepaid legal services, but what was far more important than the money that they've made is the person they've become because of the process. The person they become when they weren't making any money and they were sitting in rooms like this and they were getting beef from their friends and their family and their loved ones and, it, they, and where they were doing really, really good and they had momentum and all of a sudden everything crashed in on them. Where they thought, oh, I've arrived and they really hadn't. And they started again and they kept working and they kept working and then they became something. They became someone that you admire. And it's really not about the money they make. We think that, and when we, when we introduce people, we talk about the amount of diamonds they have in their lapel, how much money they're making, how many executive directors they have. But what we really admire is the person that they are. And so you gotta realize that the best thing you can do today is go to bed better than you woke up. That's right. That's right. And so, as a matter of fact, on my whiteboard, in my office, the, the, the thing that I just will not get erased is go to bed better than you woke up. Line up online, precept upon precept, applying that slight edge that Mr. Jeff Olson uh, that is coming here and we'll talk about in a second. The, the man that really has the handbook of instructions for prepaid legal services, the slight edge also down here. Um, that's what it is. A little bit every day we go to bed better than we woke up. We are going to be a better husband to our wife, a better wife to our husband. We're going to be a better father or mother to our children. We're going to be more patient. We're going to work harder. We're going to be more productive. We're going to be more effective. We're going to increase our relationship with our God. We're going to be more um, caring and loving for our fellow man. And we're going to make more money. It's okay. That's all good, yeah. But, but the money's just part of it. And so don't get just caught up in the money. Because you know, I, I continually make more money, but not every day do I, have I made more money than the last. You know, there's, you know, I may make more money on Monday than I did Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. It, that isn't always consistently going up. It, it tends to, it tends to do one of these things. But what, tends, but what is consistent is the person we become because of the things that we do and the sacrifices that we make. Just by being here shows the caliber of an individual you are. So all that first 15 minutes of training I just said to, to show you who you are. Number one, who you are, and number two, who you can be. The great men and women of this world, the people that we that we find in our history books that did change the world, the Abraham Lincolns, the Gandhis, the Mother Teresas, the Founding Fathers, the Martin Luther Kings, those types of individuals were n no different than you. They made sacrifices. They stayed focused on things that were bigger than themselves. And in consequence, because they never deterred from that, they never got caught up in what other people said, and then, or, or the game, or the show, or anything. They focused on just being better every single day. That's why we know them. That's why they were impactful. And that's the type of people you can be. And you're showing that, and you're proving that just by being here. So all that is just to say, please give yourself a round of applause.
All right, the 10 core commitments. Um, how much time do I have to do these now? 15 seconds? <laughs> All right, we'll get them done. Uh, but really, um, the, this is what we do, the, the game plan, the things we talked about. Um, we, uh, we need a, a, a road map, so to speak. Um, us men, we tend to be stubborn. We tend to just think we're going the right direction until we're lost and we're out of gas and we're hitchhiking in the desert. Um, and, you know, less effective, you know, not very, and so it's important that we have a roadmap, that we know exactly where we're going, what the things we need to do to get there. The great thing about prepaid legal services is um, we provide a guarantee. And the guarantee is this, do these things stalwartly, faithfully, and you'll have success. That's right. Mm -hmm. Isn't that neat? You're not going to find that really anywhere else. But our product's so darn good, it's, it's, you, you'd buy it without the compensation plan. Mm -hmm. it, you know, if it's Miracle Juice, or Super Gel, or an online mall where you could buy a bunch of stuff that you could get at Walmart, no offense to anybody that's done any of those companies, they're great in their own right, you can't really give the guarantee. There's people that, that have been in companies for 20 years because the big shot's gotten so good at selling a dream that really doesn't exist anymore. It existed 20 years ago. But here, you know, it's been around 35 years, and there's people getting rich right now. Never had any experience in the industry, and, not only, and they're not doing it by selling some elixir or some silly thing, some bogus product where they just take an inanimate object, an inanimate object, wrap a story around it, some myth and legend where they did the, these crazy things to get this exotic root that they then emulsified and poured all this random tonic potion stuff on it, and then a flower burst and they ground that up and sold it to you in a pill and it saved your life. You know, that's their story they come up with. And then you gotta go tell your friends, oh, look at this, this super flower pill, you know? You gotta buy this stuff and your friends are like, Get out, get out of my house. <laughs> you know, or, or let, me, let, me, let me take another thing. I'm, I'm tangenting a little bit, but this is important. Let's just take the telecom industry. Or utilities is a fairly common one. There's companies that, that are network marketing companies that want to sell you. How, seriously, how, how long do I have? Because I could go for 20 more minutes. No, no, no. I know. I gotta get off stage. I gotta get off stage. You guys gotta do some stuff. Then I gotta get back on stage. When do I have to get off stage the first time? Oh, we got plenty of time. Okay, this is great. I thought I was over. I thought I thought I was gonna be like, yeah, there's ten of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See at the top. You know, got plenty of time. Um, okay, so let's just take the utilities. There's network marketing companies that market utilities. <laughs> okay, that's a prime one and it, it, it'll do good for our example, but you could use just about all of them. And what they'll do is they say, okay, we market utilities. Now, the good news, the, the, number one, they're more expensive than what you're already paying. However, the good news is they don't work as well. And so you're going to pay more, but get less in return than what you already have. So your electric bill, your cell phone, this and that, it's going to cost more, just not going to be as good as what you already have for less. <laughs> All right, and that's what they sell. That's the dream. And so what you got to do, if you're in this company, and there's several, is you got to go to your friends and say, hey, buy this. Get rid of what you've already had that's cheaper and convenient. Get something that's not convenient and cost more money. What do you think? Are you in? Let's do this. Do you see an opportunity for yourself? You prepared to get started, you know? And, and people get rich off that, crazily enough. But really, what is, what's the whole message? Help me out. It doesn't help you out. It costs more money. It doesn't do as well as what you already have does. But it will help me out if you do it. How about it? And you know what? People, because of that, because they're aggressive, they'll make money doing that. But who is it about? It's about you, isn't it? 
And that's why our industry has a stigma. That's why the network marketing industry is thought of as being dishonest. Because frankly, the majority of it is. There's some great people in all those companies, but there's a lot of dishonesty. Because you have to, you know you're providing nothing. And all you're really thinking about is making a buck. And so every day you sell your soul a little bit, every single day, even if you're getting rich. It's one thing to make a dollar, it's another thing to be able to sleep at night. And what, what do we have, what's the, what's the saying for our company? What's the magic phrase? Making a living while making a difference. We make a difference. We have a product that does work. You know, when other people are saying, yeah, get something you already have that's not very good and pay more money, we're saying get something that you absolutely need. However, you can't afford it. And we'll get you the very best of it. By the way, you can't get it anywhere else. But you can get it from me. That's not so bad, is it? Yeah. That's why we can say that if you'll just follow these 10 core commitments, that you'll succeed. Because it's just common sense. In, the, in a lot of those other companies, they, what really they could say, you do this and that. Matter of fact, they have similar things that they'll tell you to do. But they can't guarantee you success. Because, because you really just have to be a bulldog. You have to sell out a little bit in order to do it. And so they can't just give you, based on just principles and simple activity, they can't give you the guarantee that we give you. Now here's, there's two mistakes that people make. They will stick around in prepaid legal services for years and they'll go, where's my paycheck? But if you'll, but if you'll take the time to ask a few simple questions, you'll find that the reason they don't have the paycheck that, that other people have that have been in just as long is because they didn't have a discipline when it came to these 10 core commitments. So just being around doesn't do the trick. Doing the commitments is the trick. But however, you'll have other people that will do these militantly, religiously, for a short period of time. And they'll get discouraged. The twins in the back, they'll remember uh, uh, Mindy McGookin. Remember Mindy? This is an individual, one of the first people I recruited, wouldn't have thought much of her as far as the business goes. And uh, this is when we had no identity theft. When it cost $249 to become an associate. We didn't have any of these fun promotions we have now. And uh, in her third month, she as a manager had 72 counters that month. Wow. 72 counters as a manager. And I was a director, so I got some overrides off that. I was excited, but, um, but I mean, she was just a prodigy. I mean, she took it seriously. I mean, she was almost intimidating. Just this little simple girl. And she quit after four and a half, five months. She made $1,500 in passive income in that, four, that, that, that last month that she was in the business. $1,500 of money that just showed up for her doing absolutely nothing. And she quit. You want to know why? Because she wasn't a six-figure ringer yet. <laughs> That's what she said. She said, I, I thought I'd be making more money than all this. You know what she did? Uh, she went uh, and started working at Best Buy. Now, no offense to Best Buy. It's a good company. I just bought a camera there yesterday. And I appreciate the help I got. But Best Buy wasn't paying her $1,500 in passive income. And so, you know, just, we just, add, you know, if you'll just have, you know, we talk about treating it like a business. There's one problem with that. Most of us have no idea what, how, how to work a business. We don't know what that means to treat it like a business. Because, you know, when we watch TV, we see the CEO just sitting in a luxurious office in a nice suit telling everyone what to do and not doing anything. And so, if, you know, we, if that's not really what we mean by that phrase. So if you don't understand that, just do this. Treat it like a job. You can't treat it like a business, that's fine. Treat it like a job. You know, a job, you'll be on time. Mm -hmm. They'll pay you eight bucks an hour and you'll show up on time. 
And, and, and you'll stare at it if you must. You'll make the commute. You'll say yes, sir, and, and yes, ma'am, and so on and so forth, because they're going to pay you that 8, 9, 10, 15, 20 bucks an hour, whatever it is. And so just if, if you'll just have the same level of commitment to your own dreams as you'll have to your boss's dreams, you'll, you'll get wealthy in prepaid legal services. So we're just asking you, keep the same commitment for your own dreams and your family's dreams as you do for your boss and his family's dreams. Wouldn't you agree that really if we ask ourselves the common sense question, our family is more important to us than his? Then shouldn't it just make sense that we would be just as or more committed to what gets us to where we want to be, which is prepaid legal services? So treat it like a job. If you could just treat it like a job, you won't be able to spend the money in a short period of time because you're committed to that job. As well you should be. That's integrable. That's noble. But it's also noble to, to um, be loyal to your own dreams. Um, Side button. Huh? Side button. Side button, okay. You know, it's funny. Uh, for, uh, towards me? Oh, oh. It's not a button, it's like a little roller thing. Um, okay. You know, every time the guy on stage makes a fool of himself, we have this like cliche. They're like saying, you don't have to be smart to do this business. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it because it's, it's so worn out, all right? <laughs> mm, look at me. I just made a mistake, all right? Sue me. I got Title Three. all right? All righty. I'll be here all week. Anyways, um, I won't actually. Um, Core commitment number one. Got a date on Saturday in Mesa. Um, <laughs> commit to the CFT process. Really, all, you know, we have all these different promotions. I'm not even going to get into that because that changes and we don't want to confuse folks. This, and let me just let's, just, let's break down the core of core commitment number one. Commit to the CFT process basically just means get paid. You know, uh, Mr. Stone Cipher. Uh, did a conference call and talked about a lot of things. I won't get into the details, but he really said, you know, we have all these different incentives and things we're trying to do, and bravo to us. You know, we can give certificates. Those are important. We can give the high fives. We can give the round of applause for when people advance. But it doesn't matter near as much as a paycheck. Because when we signed that app, we weren't thinking, if I can just get a round of applause. <laughs> It'd make life so much better. <laughs> no, they're thinking the car payment <laughs> needs to get paid. I can't walk to work, right? You know, I've got bills to pay. People are thinking about the money. And so as important as all those things are, and the longer we're in prepaid legal services, the more important they become. But what's most important is the paycheck. And so when people get started, they want to get paid. And the longer they go without getting paid, the less belief they have in prepaid legal services. And so, and you know, the, I agree with most everything that prepaid legal services does, but one thing that I find fatal is that we give anyone 45 days to do it. Because what happens is the nature of the beast, just like we did in high school, we didn't do the book report until the day before. We didn't do... Um, we didn't study for the test until the day before the test. We are a procrastinating people. Now you might be able to get away with that in high school, um, be, but you know, 45 days from now, a lot of bills were due already that needed to be paid, and prepaid legal services didn't come to the rescue. And so what we say, <laughs> I straight say right in there when I'm reading the, the first step saying, this is 45 days, that's a typo. It's actually four to five days. Um, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, but anyways, uh, I'm not recommending you lie, but, um, but I do. Um, but four to five days, because when they're getting started, they don't know what they don't know. But let, let me just tell you how it went down for me. <laughs> there was no system trainings. There was no getting started right training, no first step, no nothing. It was, this, this was my training. I went to a briefing. I said, let's do this. Chris Hughes sponsored me. 
He said, all right, dude, we need to have four recruits this week. We have to have them. I was like, okay. Do you know what I did? I went and got four recruits because we had to have them in that week. Now, was it because I was brilliant? Is it because I just was natural? I was born with Lady Justice tattooed on my chest? No. It's because that's what I was told to do. I didn't, Chris didn't even know how brilliant he was. He had to, he was trying to qualify for ED and there's only a week left and he needed some extra counters. That's what that was all about. It wasn't like he just, well, Einstein and prepaid legal, he had to, he, he needed to make a buck, all right? But that's what he told me and I was like, oh, okay. So you know what I did? I did it. You know, we just set expectations. It's true. All we need to do is say, this is what we expect. And if you've been properly edified, then they'll honor your expectations. If you, you know, in this business, it's all about edification. When I went to my first meeting, I just assumed everyone was millionaires. Just because Chris Hughes talks so highly of them all. And then, the, and then those people that Chris Hughes talks so highly of, I'd go talk to them, and they talk so highly of Chris Hughes. And so now I'm like, who did I bump into? You know, and if that guy says jump, I said how high. So he says four, you know, four recruits in a week. By golly, I was going to get four recruits in a week. So if you edify someone correctly, and you just set an expectation, the expectation will be met. And along with that, they get paid. You could read the rest. This is all good. You get three recruits. You know, that's what CFT qualifies you. That's, that's what moves you up the ranks. But just set an expectation and get to work on it. The only other caveat is don't throw them up against the wall and hope that they stick. You know, Mr. Hughes answered the phone when I called. And he was just as motivated as I was. You know, so be a good sponsor. And, and you know, matter of fact, that's what, that's what um, the next core commitment is, the first step training. You, you know how this starts? You know, a lot of people say, well, it's about a week from now, we're going to get busy on this, we're going to go over some stuff. Yeah, thanks for coming out. No. You trade the application for the first step. You trade paperwork for paperwork. Five minutes. Whoa. All right. Um, man, it was just, just like a few minutes ago, it was 20 minutes. Um, and, and guys, this is the most important thing. You, you, yeah, you schedule it, you go through the why, that's all important. It's all important. The conference call number, their upline number, so they know who to call. Very important. It's vital. But the most vital thing of all of this is this. The contact list. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time on this later on. But, but, but you can't, you will not succeed in prepaid legal services if you don't make a list. And a big one. And I'll, I'll do the math on that later. Um, I could spend an hour just training on the list. Most important thing you'll ever do in prepaid legal services, more than the books you read, is imp those will change your life, but to get you to the point where you'll actually read the book and get into personal development and come to these trainings, you need a list, and the list is what's going to get you paid. Um, commit to daily exposures. You know, this is a business where we, we prime the pump. You know, if we want water to come out of the well, we have to prime the pump. Okay, it doesn't happen on its own. Just because you sign the app, people aren't going to start knocking on your door. I'm thinking that you've got a home-based business opportunity that I'd be interested in. That doesn't happen. That hasn't happened to me. I've been around a while. Okay, you've got to get your name out there. It's like anything else. It's like prom. It's like senior prom. If you want a date, you need to get your name out there. You need to market yourself. You need to see this is someone that you want to go get the little core shot massage from, okay? And the way we do that is by getting the exposures out in the marketplace. Now, there's two things you need. You need the tool, and you need a label to put on the tool. You can't just fire those puppies out and think that they got a built-in homing device on and they're going to figure out where you're at. You know? It doesn't even count if you hand out a tool without a label. So get a label. And, um, and I'll talk briefly a little bit later on about effectiveness. Last time I was here, I talked about the four levels of effectiveness. Maybe this side of the room remembers that, um, <laughs> since you were here. Um, but there's, there's good and bad ways to do that, and there's more effective ways. But just make sure to get at least two exposures a day. Um, 
this is pretty self-explanatory because you're here. You've got, you've got this one figured out, okay? Um, which is be here. And you know, the best way I could train on this is just ask yourself at the end of the night if it was of value to you, if this was worth your time. And if, it is, if you get answer yes to this, that question, then certainly it's worth the, your people's time. And so just plug in and promote heavily for this. It does you good, yes, but what about your organization? We've got to think bigger than ourselves. Um, core commitment number five, as important as this is, no money's getting made tonight. We're not going to sign apps tonight. This is important, but this is more important. Because this is where the money, I built my business solely off of this. Why? Because the first presentation I went to, Russell Peden did it. It was amazing. I sat there and thought, and I had a weirdo right next to me. There's always a, the token weirdo at the briefing. All right? I don't know who it is here, but the guy that's like claps at everything. And woo! You know, it looks like they're on the prices, right? You know, woo! Woo! You know, or, and I, I'm sitting smack dab right next to the weirdo. And, and, you know, I had to deal with the weirdo. I'm like, where am I? You know, where's Bob Barker? What, is, what have I got myself into? <laughs> but it, but it, the weirdo and all, after I saw Russell Peden do his presentation, I had the thought, how could anyone say no to this? And so all I did was had more people show up because I knew that if they would just get to the briefing, they'd do it. So, you know, what, what, there's a problem in prepaid legal services, just a tad. People are so into the training right now that they prioritize it over the briefing. And you can't make any money out of training. It'll make you feel good, you'll get addicted to it, but if you're not bringing people to the briefing, you ain't making any money. And so you've completely lost focus on why you got started. You didn't sign the app saying, I just want to get trained for years and years and still be broke. No. You, you said, I want to make some money. And the training will teach you how to do that because we're in a training and we're talking about the briefing, right? You know, but the training's not effective unless we take the things we've been trained on and put them into action. And so if you're going to trainings and you're not going to briefings, then you're self-deceiving yourself. There is no way all the trainings, you can go to the rest of the trainings that we'll ever have until the nuclear war or Jesus comes or whatever in Colorado, and you won't make any money unless you prioritize the briefing and prioritize the money-making activities. So if you're showing up here and you're not showing up the briefing, you need to, um, you need to check yourself and you need to prioritize it the way it needs to be. For example, if you can do both, do both. But if you can only do one, do the briefing and bring people with you. And then if you bring enough people with you, you get rid of your job, you can do both. Um, <laughs> what can I say, you know? The best of the best is Jeff Olson. It, it, not just in prepaid legal services, in the industry. It, it, there's just no... As far as priorities go, as far as things that could really just ma magnify where you are in prepaid legal services, um, there's lots of things that can do it. There's lots of little epiphanies that we can have. It could be here, it could be there, it could be at this meeting or that meeting. But if you really want to know something you can do that will certainly provide that, just show up to the Super Saturday where Jeff will. Any Super Saturday, for starters, anyone. They're, they're just amazing. But Jeff Olson, is that's a whole different league. So just be there. Um, <laughs> the corporate events, again, I wish I, I, I shouldn't have spent so much time on other stuff, but I'll just tell you a, a quick story. I, uh, I signed up September 17th, 2001, six days after a very interesting time of, of our nation's history. And we were, and the convention was in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, less than 100 miles from the Pentagon where all sorts of crazy things happened. And um, frankly, I didn't want to go anywhere in that ballpark, nor did I have the money to go. It was two weeks later that the convention was going to happen. It was October 4th. I, wasn't, I didn't have the money. I, I signed up for the little services because I didn't have money. And now I had to go spend $600 on a plane ticket and then the room and then all the expensive food and then the $155 for the, 
the, the ticket to get in the convention. And I just said to Mr. Hughes, I said, hey, um, I'll make the next one for sure. I'm totally there for the next one, but I can't make this one. You know what he said? Okay. You're the boss, but I won't work with you. I said, dude, I just dropped $250 on this. Don't tell me you're not going to work with me. He's like, here's the thing, Travis. If you don't go to this one, there won't be a next one. You will quit the business. You will, you will not succeed in prepaid legal services. So I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to be honest. You know, you didn't sign up to fail. So I'm telling you how you don't fail. You go. Well, I can't go. Well, you can go if you want to go. You can make it happen. We'll talk about making it happen later, but you can make it happen. And I promise you, if you do go, and this was the kicker, your business will be 10 times larger yep. than from first convention to second convention. You know what I did? I went. Quit two of my three jobs, got fired from the third. <laughs> um, and, I, and I spent some time at the plasma bank. I have, you'd think I was a heroin addict if you saw my arm right now. I got the scars to prove how I got to that convention. I was scared to death to fly anywhere near that part of the country because of the current events of the time. Um, but, but Providence moved. You know that $600 plane ticket? You know, I got on that plane, it was overbooked. And they said, anyone that will get off the plane and get on the next plane an hour later will give you a $600 voucher. <laughs> Gone. Didn't have to pay for the plane ticket. But then, I get there to go get my convention ticket. They're sold out. Well, all that meant is I had a clear conscience when I snuck in. <laughs> and I snuck on. It, it, they didn't have, security now is a little more difficult. You got to be hiding in a stall all night. But uh, I just bolted through. I just ran right past people. You know, there's a, a herd of people. They weren't going to find me, so I just ran. You know, I got through it. I got, <laughs> fell around a few times the whole bit. But I, but I, so there was my ticket. Uh, hotel room, you know, we go in the hotel room and uh, Carmelo Flores, Golden Platinum Executive Director, Platinum 2 Executive Director from Southern California is in our room. And I was with Mr. Hughes and uh, he's like, what are you doing in my room? And he's like, what are you doing in my room? <laughs> it's like, all right, conflict of interest, I'll go get another room. So we go get another room, the best room in the whole place, uh, overlooking the harbor. And guess what? Guess whose room they ended up giving us? Dave Savolas. Oh. That kid had to sleep on somebody's couch that night because we ganked his room. Isn't that great? We stole Dave Savolas' room. The Providence moved. Now, I know it's way past five minutes uh, from what they told me, but, but I made it happen, and, and then I was rewarded by the powers that be. Now, that's all great in and of itself, but I had four people in my organization when I went there. Four months later at the next convention, I had 76. That's 19 times the growth. You just make it happen is the point. You make it happen. If you don't want to make it happen, fine. You don't get 19 times the growth. So just, re just re remember, all I'm asking you, just remember why you, you decided to do prepaid legal services. If you look at any of the things I'm discussing with resistance, I just ask you to remember why you're doing this. And, and, and so don't resist is the point. Personal development, I'm just going to go short on this because I'll spend time on it later. Um, remember what I talked about? It's not, it's not, t take prepaid legal away and, th and, they'll, and they could succeed at anything else. This is why. Because they're not the same individuals that they started in prepaid legal services. Take it away. And they're just successful people. They're not successful in prepaid legal services. They're successful people. Now, why is that the case? This is why that's the case. Because they learn every single day. They spend time every single day. And they study the art of being a better person. You know, some people read the tabloids. Some people watch the negative news about rape and murder and extortion and robbery. These people learn about how to be better people. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that simple? Isn't that just common sense that we would do that? But very few do. The masses, the masses don't. 
But what do we do to succeed? We separate ourselves from the masses. Right. We read good books. We listen to good audios. You know, have you ever seen like the guy with like the headphones on walking down the street listening to rap and this and that? He's like, you know why he's walking? Because he can't afford a car. Okay? It's because he's listening to that crazy. He's listening to 50 Cent. You know why his name's 50 Cent? Because that's about what he provides to the marketplace in value. He's worthless. Tell you about drugs and sex and immorality and adultery and killing and shooting folks, busting caps and folks or whatever. It's ridiculous. And people buy that stuff. People buy that. And who does it benefit? It benefits one person. 50 Cent. And I don't know how that kid sleeps at night. And, then, and, you know, and so don't blame President Bush. <laughs> if you want to blame someone, blame 50 Cent. But don't blame 50 Cent. Blame the goofball that decided to buy the CD. Because yeah. that's the individual that's blaming President Bush. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? <laughs> Isn't that so ironic? You know, it's that type of attitude that makes it so easy for you and I to succeed. This is America, the United States of America, the land of the free, the home of the brave, all that good stuff. It's true. There's so much money in the United States that we, you will find no other country where you can just walk down the street, see money on the ground, and just keep on walking. They don't do that anywhere else. There's so much money in here. God has blessed this country so much that you can get rich just by process of elimination. Just by not being like all the goofs, all the moochers and the losers and the looters. If you'll just be a good person and focus on the right things rather than the wrong things that most people focus on in the media and the magazines, etc., you can succeed and be happy by process of elimination. That's how good it is here. If you can't succeed in America, it's the man in the mirror. If it's Bangladesh, you might have a good excuse. But not in the United States. Not here. This, I'm a patriot, but let me just tell you. Back to personal development. And it's because we learn how to be better. We take time, we take time to be better. Just make, your motto in life should be, I try to be better every day. I go to bed better than I woke up. And it's through personal development. The workout partner. The Hughes brothers have one of the best stories in network marketing history where five brothers all came in and succeeded. Five brothers. <coughs> but when you ask them why, because they'll, they'll, they'll be the first to tell you every single one of them quit. How are they all here? How are they all successful? How are they millionaire club members, executive directors, $100,000 ring earners, all that? They'll tell you because none of them quit on the same day. <laughs> you know, Chris may have had a bad day when Dave recruited three people. That would keep Chris in. Dave may have had a horrible day, but his twin brother knocked it out of the park that day. That will keep Dave in because they were workout partners. And so when you have a workout partner, you, you can never really quit because you may quit, but they won't let you quit. All alone, it's just a matter of time for all of us. Dave Savola, it would just be a matter of time when he first got started if he didn't have a workout partner. Someone needs to keep you in the business. Someone needs to show you the light when all you see is darkness. You know, we we uh, create these stories and uh, create these conspiracy theories and wrap ourselves in cellophane, so to speak, so we can't see clearly. And then, we, and then we think things are a certain way when they're not. And we'll start to create these alibis and how prepaid legal services wronged us or the powers that be just don't want you to succeed. And you need someone to knock you on the forehead and to cut through the cellophane and say, hey, this isn't how life is. It's better than this. I'm here for you. I'm not going to let you self-destruct. You've got to have a workout partner. And the, and the last one is simply tenacity. Don't quit. Do these things. Remember at the beginning I said, don't just stick around. Don't just be here a year from now, five years from now. Do these things. Do them for three months and you'll, have, you'll make a difference. Do them for a year and, uh, and you'll live a different life. 
Do it for five years, it'll change your life. You, you, you'll never have to go back. You won't have jobs. You, you'll be able to wake up when you're done sleeping. You'll be able to decide when and where you go on vacation. There's a book called A Thousand Places to See Before You Die. Um, you know what I'm doing? Seeing them all. Right on. You know why? Because I just made a commitment to, to never go away, to just focus and work hard on those things. And you know what? I'm accomplishing it. I live a great life. I went skiing today. Most people, it was empty. Most people were at a job. Now, is it, does that make me better than them? No, it means I've been working at what you're working at for a little longer. And I, and I, but I've been militant to the process. And I've done it consistently. Mr. Hughes has done it consistently. That's the 10 core commitments. I'm going to have to take it out of the back end of my, my train, but whatever, right? I appreciate you guys. I'll turn it back over to Mr. Mike Hughes. Thank you. Oh, you're right. Dude, that's awesome. Okay, that was awesome. Did you guys like that? Wow, I was taking some nuggets. All right, writing down some notes as fast as I could write. Hey guys, listen, let me just mention a couple things real fast. What we're going to do is we're going to, we want to uh, break for just a second. But before we do that, we want to do one of the, I think one of the most important parts of our uh, systems training. And that's where we recognize those who are doing uh, something in prepaid legal. First of all, I want to recognize the people who volunteer and really help out to be able to grow this marketplace. They show up early, they stay late, they help, you know, setting up the equipment, they run the equipment. Folks, that's a lot of extra work that they do in behalf of the marketplace to serve you and to help you and your business. And folks, let's give them a big hand. If they, if they, if they helped out at all, if you helped out, please stand up. Let's recognize you guys. Thank you. Okay, um, and I, I don't, okay, well, I don't have my clicker, but that's okay. I don't think I need it. Okay, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> All right, so what we want to do is we want to recognize those folks that are, are doing the deal, and they're in what we call Players Club. And in Players Club, that's whenever you go out there and you just do a minimum amount of work for a long period of time, and you get rewards for that. Uh, you get cash bonuses, you get vacations that the company gives away. So folks, here's all you have to do to get into Players Club. In 30 days, or 31 days, whatever it might be, recruit one person. You market them a legal plan, an identity theft plan. And you help them get CFT qualified in that month. You get five points for doing all of that. So five points get you into Players Club, and that's all you have to do. So that's something that I think should be really a bare minimum standard for anybody who's building this business even on a part-time basis. You can find a way to do it. You can find a way to get into Players Club. A lot of times, it, it, you know, maybe your circumstances doesn't allow you to be able to do it right now, but you can find a way to be able to do it. And sometimes whenever you, you start asking people in Players Club, you start to find out little tips that allow you to be able to open up your whole entire mind to the possibilities of how you now can get into Players Club. And it all comes from finding out what people that are in Players Club, what they're doing to maintain in Players Club. And if you notice, every single week, it's usually the same people that stand up. So you should pick their brains and find out what they're doing and what advice that you can get from them to help you maintain and, and wind up be, being in Players Club. Folks, if you're in Players Club 5 or 10, go ahead and give up, get stand up. We want to recognize those folks. Give them a big hand. <clears throat> Here's what you know about Players Club. Those people made money. Uh, they're getting paid. And so, uh, anyway, you want to make sure that you stay in Players Club, do the best you possibly can. Who marketed a membership this week? If you marketed a membership, we want to recognize you. Go ahead and stand up. All right, give them a hand. Good job. All right, um, and some of you guys, I'm sure, marketed multiple memberships, but we won't go through that sick of time. All right, also, how many of you guys um, recruited somebody over the last seven days since our last systems training? If you recruited somebody, we'd like to recognize you. Who, who's recruited somebody since the last seven days? All right, stand up, guys. That's a big deal. These are your business builders right here. These are the ones that are out there constantly recruiting and um, and building their businesses. Did anybody uh, bring your new uh, associate with you? Yes. Yes. Sandy? <laughs> who, who did? Ronnie. Ronnie. Oh, hi, Ronnie. How are you? Did you bring him? Well, then we want to hear from you guys. Come on up to the stage. 
grab this mic for you. We just want to know your name, background, how'd you do it, and the tool that you used to expose them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Bill and Emily Schaup, and um, my background is corporate America, uh, and my wife does prepaid legal for a living. Thank you. Um, the tool we use, uh, Ronnie, last, last name again, Ronnie. Stafford. Sorry, Welcome. I didn't want to mispronounce it. Uh, Ronnie and I have been friends now for about a year. Been talking back and forth about different things. He finally accepted the invitation to come see the briefing and then sent him home with the DVD. Uh, he's, he's watched it and reviewed it and been talking to other folks about it, bought the membership and says, you know what, this is, works. the membership works so well, I want to become an associate. Very right. good. Well, congratulations. Congratulations to you too. Very, very cool. All right, so folks, uh, any CFT associates? This since the last seven days, we want to recognize you. That's a huge, uh, huge accomplishment if you did. Okay, we're going to move on here. All right, the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to break for just a second. And I want to just mention this. We've got a, uh, a table over there that's got third-party marketing materials. Now, if you're new to the business and you haven't been re just reinforced in your brain how important the third-party tools is, I just had a conversation with one of my new associates that he understood the concept and the importance of getting third-party. He's having more success in prepaid legal in the last week than he's had in network marketing over the last 10 years. And folks, the reason why is because he did it all by himself, not using third-party tools. And he didn't, he never saw duplication, ever. He recruited 128 people and no one duplicated. And folks, in prepaid legal services, he's already rocketing to the top. And he's doing it because he, now he understands how important third-party exposures are. Third-party exposures is the DVDs. Third-party, I mean, if you want to get somebody exposed, here's a, here's a private business reception. Here's a full-on presentation. Talks to the very, uh, you know, the, about the company, the, the timing, the compensation, everything, by two of the youngest millionaires in prepaid legal. If somebody has a question about the credibility of the company, justice for all. Four attorney generals talking about prepaid legal and how great it is. And here's another uh, video that we can wind up showing. And then whenever somebody signs up, and you go, well, what do I need to do? You go, this, I don't know, but if you listen to this, I'm pretty sure they know. And so you get Jeff Olson. And you give them a three CD set and you say, go, go memorize this CD. You'll learn everything you need to know about prepaid legal. Folks, there's magazines. There's all kinds of tools. Go back there. Take a look at that. But here's what I know. If you plan on making the bare minimum of uh, the 10 core commitments of exposing two people a day, then what's the bare minimum of tools that you should have on hand for the rest of the week? 10, right? So folks, go make sure that you have those on your possessions we know that every single marketplace is the more tools that are being out in the marketplaces the bigger the marketplace grows we've seen it time and time again so guys go back to the cool table or the cool table and we're going to break for about 10 minutes we're going to come right back up with some stellar training from mr travis alexander thank Doctor? you Let's go. Uh, travis alexander thanks brother you got all righty i'm back uh, okay, I'm going to tell you a couple stories, and uh, I'll keep it, it'll go along with the topic of the training tonight. But um, first, first thing I tell you a story when I was um, 10, 11 years old, and I was I was with my father just driving somewhere. And uh, I live. I'm from Riverside, California, and uh, Riverside, California is where there's a uh, there's a Air Force base called March Air Force Base. Um, it's now March something else base, but it's not. But then it was the Air Force Base, and sometimes, um, I'd, unbeknownst to me, but they would you know shoot satellites in the air and rockets and you know whatever, just lots of military type stuff, and and. Um, and so there's this base, and I'm driving down the street with my dad, and it was an, it was a earlier that day there was some some heavy rain that was kind of with there really quick rained a lot and then gone, and usually the consequence of that is there's these big cumulonimbus, cumulonimbus clouds, the big <laughs> puffy ones, right? And uh, you can really tell because it was dark, but they were there. Anyhow, uh, we're driving down this street. And uh, all of a sudden, in these big clouds, all puffy all over the place in all their glory, this bright, 
pillar of light starts coming through the clouds. And it's so bright that it starts like breaking through the clouds and it looks like a stairway is coming down through the clouds. It was, it was amazing. Well, meanwhile, back at my grandparents' house, and I had grandparents that, um, they're those types of people that knew every word in the Bible. They could recite it to you in Greek and Hebrew and everything else, but didn't really live any of it. Um, <laughs> but they knew it backwards and forth. Uh, all the codes and you know, crazy things that you could find in there, they knew them. They just didn't live by it. And so, you know, they're a few miles away, and uh, they see the same thing that me and my father are seeing. And they both come to the united conclusion that Jesus is coming. Yeah, this is Jesus coming out of the clouds. It's the second coming, and here he is, right? And so, they're like, so there they are. They're like, it's Jesus. And then they come to the realization <laughs> of the way they've been living their lives. This is true. These are otherwise normal people. And, uh, and so my grandmother, they're like, they're, by the way, let me like paint a picture for you. They're chain smokers. I mean, they, they had the same lighter they had since the 1940s because they only had to use it in the morning because they just would light one cigarette onto the next. Right? <laughs> You know, and away they went. I mean, they smoked. <laughs> and uh, here, they, here they are. My, my grandmother sees Jesus, what she thinks is Jesus. She runs into a coat closet to hide from Jesus. Because <laughs> she thinks the whole earth is going to get scorched. And uh, she thinks that if she just chills in this closet, you know, she'll be out. So she's in a, a, a coat closet, smoking away. She's like, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. You know, and this and that. And my grandfather's a little more brave. And so he's, he's out in the street. You know, there's neighbors around, for crying out loud. And he's, he's got the cigarette burning his knuckle. He's like, I'm sorry. Forget me. You know, and he's going, going at it. And so and you know, this goes on for three or four minutes while this light is doing its thing. And then it goes away. And by the way, it was a satellite. <laughs> and, you know, so he, they're just kind of waiting and then, Finally, a realization comes that it's not what they think it is, and they're like, oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> oops, you know, and, uh, and so anyways, we, uh, I see them the next day, and they're talking to my dad. They're like, we got a new lease on life. Uh, everything's different now. We're different people, you know, we're going we're gonna to follow that book, and, uh, you know, that lasted for about three days. And then they were right back <laughs> to the way they were, you know. And, and, uh, and, you know, they were just really excited because they didn't get, you know, burnt the stubble or whatever. Um, but they thought it was like a new lease, a, new, a second chance. And they had literally seen the light. And so it is sometimes with us. As we come and, and we sit in these trainings or we go to the Super Saturdays or the briefings and uh, a very common occurrence at uh, the, the national conventions where we'll see someone and that's successful and we'll hear something that resonates with us and uh, we will feel like we have seen the light. That all of a sudden we got the nugget, we got the epiphany and things are different now. And you know they can be. And for some they are. But see, in this room, it's safe. In this room, everyone feels the same way. This is a positive group of people. These are people that are united in a cause. These are people that want a better life for themselves. There's synergy in this room that you won't find outside of this room. And so it's very easy to sit here to take notes, to feel good about yourself, and to feel like you've seen the light. But you've got to realize that that's fine and dandy here. But when you go out there and you've got that, you've, and you have the, the family member or the spouse or whatever that just won't leave you alone about it. My sister to this day thinks I'm a scam artist. Every time I see her, she makes some sort of comment about that. In addition, she all, also asks to borrow money every single time I see her. 
Not a good approach if you need a buck or two, by the way. Um, you know, but you have to deal with that stuff. You have to deal with uh, having the PBR and no one showing up. I know I'm not the only one. You have to deal with it where just about everyone says yes at the briefing, but your guest doesn't. And they have all sorts of fun things to say. And uh, the embarrassment and the messing it up, the spending money on a bunch of tools and you don't think you're getting the results that you deserve out of them and all sorts of different things happen. And, and then all of a sudden that light that we've seen just like grandma and grandpa then after a few days dissipates. And then where are we? You know what's interesting? This is about, you know, we said the, this side of the room was here for mine. You know, the funny thing is this side wasn't. But you know the room was about as full this time as it was last time? Yeah, it means that half those people that saw the light, I mean, it was a kumbaya fest. It was a good time we had. <laughs> um, the, it dissipated. It went away. Hiram W. Smith said, the definition of true character is doing the thing you said you'd do long after the spirit of the moment has left. So here it is. The spirit of the moment is here, but it's easy now. But when you have that person that just won't leave you alone, or where you're just not, where you're failing, where you're failing, frankly, you're just failing at this, then how do you feel? Then can you remember this? Is the light still shining? Because this, let me tell you, we talked earlier about the process. You have to fail. You have to to have people that go against you on this. Dave Savola, he's had that PBR that no one showed up at. Darnell Self, they've had him. The Hughes, they've had him. You have to have them. You can't skip transparently through failure to get to success. They go together. Success and failure are like Siamese twins. They're identical. They look the same. They're attached. You can't have one without the other. And just like twins, one precedes the other. The only real difference is how they're spelled. Success is failure. And failure is success. They're two parts of the same thing. And you cannot have one without the other. And so when you have that failure, when you go out there and you hear the words no, when, they hear, when, they, when you hear the words are you crazy, when you hear the is that a pyramid, when you get uh, just a whole lot of what you think you don't deserve, realize you deserve every single bit of it. And good for you. Because it's part of the process. Let me tell you a quick story about a fellow that you've probably heard of, Colonel Sanders. He's the reason why I'm 10 pounds overweight. Okay? <laughs> Colonel Sanders, at 65 years old, retired for a $99 Social Security check. His whole life, he learned one skill, that of pumping gas. He was a, I don't know why they call him Colonel. He was a Colonel gas station. He pumped gas for a living. Uh, no offense to that, but not a lucrative craft. And so he is. Here he is with this $99 Social Security check, 65, okay, what's his first excuse? I have no money. 65 years old, I'm too old. Gas, attend, gas station attendant, I have no skills. He had really nothing to speak of. The only thing out of every, because he had $99 a month is a problem. And the only thing he could even come up with as he pondered, what can I do to solve this problem? I can't make it on $99. The only thing after searching the universe for what he had was a chicken recipe that a few people seemed to like. And so he goes with this little piece of recipe, I don't know, I guess on a piece of paper, and decides, I'm going to take this and I'm going to get rich with it. You know what he did? He went to Chicken Shack after Chicken Shack, you know, just these little mom and pop chicken shacks, and he'd go in and say, I'm guessing you have a recipe for chicken. I have one too. I think mine's better. 
and you can use mine, but you have to give me a, a sort of residual on every piece of chicken you sell. That was his pitch, basically. Do you think he may have gotten told no? <laughs> In fact, he did. In fact, he got told no 1,009 times. 1,000, he kept track. That's why we know the exact number. Do you think after maybe 500 of those, you might check your chicken recipe? <laughs> but what happened on the 1,010th? Okay, I'll we don't, I don't know the entire story, but I could, I could probably go through it, but we're short on time. Let's just go to the end. He died worth millions and millions and millions of dollars on a chicken recipe. And so, did he really fail a thousand and nine times? No, he succeeded in life. This man succeeded. And so it is with us. Good news, it ain't, we, we aren't marketing a chicken recipe. We're marketing something that I promise you, you won't get a thousand and nine no's. In fact, let me issue you a challenge. You don't, don't do it tonight, but maybe, or maybe after you leave, or tomorrow, whatever. Take a piece of paper. Um, I'd get a good, nice one that you don't want to wrinkle. And write the words no on it 100 times. And every time you get a good quality no, not you, you, here, take a look at this DVD. Oh, I'm not interested. That don't count. When you get someone to the briefing, they say no, that counts. When you get someone fully exposed and they say no, that counts. Every time you get one of those, cross one off the list. By the time the hundredth one's crossed off the list, you won't be able to spend the money. So fall in love with failure. Fail. Fail a bunch. Keep on failing. Just fail. You know what? You're going to mess it up. You're going you're gonna to do a PBR. You're going to trip all over yourself. You're going to do a few three-way calls, the first ones you do, and you're, and you're going to make an idiot of yourself. And you know what? You're going to become something in the process of that. You'll get better. You'll grow and you'll progress. And you'll come out at the end of that hundred nose, a whole different person with a whole different income, with a whole different life. Why? Because you failed. Not because you succeeded in what people think success is in their own definitions, what they see on TV. No, 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 no. Because you failed. And in consequence to failing, you succeed. So leave tonight and see the light and go out into the world. And when, and when you see that light dissipating, realize you're not failing like the world sees it, but you're failing the way we see it, which is success. You're succeeding. Every single time you get kicked in the teeth proverbially, you're succeeding. So fall in love with failure. You know, Jeff Olson says, quit wanting what you don't want. You don't want for everything to be sunshine and lollipops. You want failure. It's just like a muscle. Anyone that knows anything about muscles is in order for them to grow, you have to tear them to shreds. When you work out, what's happening is from the, all the contracting and, um, forget the other term for it, but um, they are tearing. And then from the nutrients that are in our body and the things that we put into them, as they heal, the fibers become stronger. And in consequence, they grow larger. And we become physically stronger. But they had to tear. They had to take abuse. It's hard work. But we get stronger. You know, a few months later, you're doing twi you're twice as strong as what you used to be. Well, the same philosophy, philosophy applies here. And so just realize it's part of a process. Anything you want to be, you know, regardless of what your natural inclinations are, you can be in the top 1% of anything. Anything. If you want to, no matter what you're naturally good at or not, if you want to be one of the best knitters in the world, in a short period of time, you can be one that you can knit better than just about everyone else. Just because you focused on it. You'll mess it up, but it's a process. If you want to be a great network marketer, regardless of how shy you are, 
or what, 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 uh, what things you have to deal with, if you'll just work hard on it for a little while, you'll pass people up. So just realize you can be and succeed and achieve at anything you want if you're willing to pay the price of failure. But, any, but anyone in life that's ever succeeded failed, and they failed miserably, and they continue to fail, and they love failure. And those people that we see as successful individuals today, they're failing still. They don't quit failing. The people that walk this stage, they continue to fail. You know, I, I was trying to invite someone to a super set, my next door neighbor to a super Saturday. You know, I think I'm Mr. Big Shot. I go, I go to invite him and say, hey, there's um, an event, he kind of knew about it. And I said, yeah, well, there's a presentation Saturday. <laughs> I don't even get a I don't even get a verbal response. I don't even get an English English response. I get a <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was twelve and getting a noogie from my next door neighbor. Like, oh you you little thingy, you know. It still happens to us. It's just it's just part of it. It's just what we do. Now I'm gonna talk about just real quickly about my skiing experience today. <laughs> okay. Um didn't do so well at first. Um, I spent, we spent half the day on the bunny slope, to be honest, and I, I look foolish. I, there's little four-year-old kids dancing around me, and I'm going and, I don't know, I, I skied, literally, I was going backwards on my skis far more than I was going forward, was I not? And I, and I, I and so much so that I got a knack for it. I could ski backwards better than I could forward, couldn't I? I, I will hustle you skiing backwards. I was like, yeah, I got this down. Why even go forward? You know, that's how bad I was. We got some film of it, in fact. I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm good. I'm where I need to be. I'm in my comfort zone, you know, and down the hill I went. This wasn't any good. But even in one day's time, I got better. And we went to bigger and more intense, relatively not intense, but uh, for me it was intense, you know, stuff. And I, and I handled it better. And just one day's time of persistence. Did I fall? He told you. I fell. I fell so much. It's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, and some of the ways that you fall, it's not just falling. It's the, if you just fell like, and you fell, that's when they, but when you're like, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> For like a cute girl that's got like pigtails and blonde hair, and she's like really good, and you're like, it's embarrassing, you know. And there I am, eating snow. There's no real reason to fall. It's not like there's a cliff or anything. I'm just going straight, and all of a sudden, out of the skis I come, and it's just smack. You know, you gotta make a decision. You know, do I continue with the abuse or not? You know, and. Um, but I did, and it got better, and, and I actually did pretty well at the end. And I, and I went from hating skiing. I was just like trying not to be ungrateful. The guy's paying for me to come ski. I got to act like I like it, you know? <laughs> you know, to actually enjoy myself, and I can't wait to go again, frankly, you know? Um, next time I'll use a little sunblock, but, um, but so anyways, uh, the, the point is, the first point of that story is, I got better because I persisted. That which we persist in doing becomes easier. Not that the nature of the task has changed, but our ability to do has increased. It was the same mountain, same white stuff, everything was the same. It never changed the whole day we were there, but I did. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that, that which we persist in doing becomes easier. Not that the nature of the task has changed, but our ability to do has increased. Let's take another uh, persistence quote. I will persist until I succeed. It's Ogmandino. You know that in the middle of his life, he was a homeless person? A straight bum. Real work for food sign. Ogmandino. One of the great authors of our time. One of the great personal development gurus of any time. And he simply, and in the middle of his life, actually a little bit into the latter part of his life, he's homeless. He's a bum. He's the people that we, we try to walk around. And that's who he becomes because of what philosophy? He persisted until he succeeded. And if you have that philosophy, when do you fail? You don't. 
The people that have that philosophy are unstoppable. Just that one philosophy. You just internalize that one thing and you cannot be defeated by life. That one thing. The other thing I learned as I was uh, skiing is, it, is it was, it's funner when you're going faster. That, just, that makes sense. It just the, There's the adrenaline rush. It was also easier to direct myself to where I wanted to go on the mountain. I could steer better when I was going faster. When I was going slow, I just couldn't, you know, get them around. But when I was going fast, it was just kind of, you know, like, kind of like you see people do the thing. It wasn't as graceful when I was doing it, but I could still, <laughs> it was just easier. The faster I went, the more I could turn. And so it is with prepaid legal services. It's funner when you do this business fast. When you piddle around and go slow, it's not as much fun. For a lot of reasons, one's the income. That's the obvious one. In addition to that, you're able to do the things you want to do and go the direction you'd like to go a lot easier when you're accelerating it. When you're just sitting around, you may have a goal, you may have a direction, but when you're, doing, when you're making your minimums your maximums, it's hard to get to that destination. It's hard to get where you want to go. As things change and as, as you don't learn the skills and you don't take the disciplines, you may have, you, when you signed the application and you made your why, you had a reason. And that's great and it remains. But you can't really have it unless you do the right thing. So what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is just take it serious. You know, fast for one is not fast for another. But take it serious. Because this business... I mean, there are some interesting people making a lot of money in prepaid legal services. There's people from all sorts of backgrounds. But they're making money with prepaid legal services. It's, it's, it's frankly, it's, it's, it's very legitimate. And it's very real. And it's something that if we just take it for what it really is and respect it for what it is, uh, it'll respect us back. Um, this is a business about dreams. We have a great product. But how many of you would be excited if I was like, you know, tonight the train's going to be about the differences between the expanded plan and the standard plan. You know, you're not going to be too excited about that. You know, we do have a great product, but that's really not what... Um, you checking my phone back there? I get, did I get a text? I texted the girl I'm going out on Saturday and she hasn't texted me back yet. I'm a little nervous, but... Um, <laughs> Twitter painted on this girl, and she doesn't even know I'm male yet. Um, that's, that sounded wrong, but like she doesn't know I'm a man. Like she's just like I'm just like nothing to her. I guess is what I meant to say. Um, but I will persist until I succeed, um, or until I get a restraining order. One of the two. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll legal shield those guys. I'm like, you stay away. You know, 100 yards, nothing. I got a legal shield. Um, but I, I saw something really neat. Can, how do I do this? You gonna do it? The, think about your lives and think about this. This is I, I've seen this a few times. I just really like. Can we hit the lights or something?
Does that not give you chills? Doesn't that light your fire? Uh, you'll probably be getting a call in a few minutes, Mr. Hughes, by the way. Um, that lights my fire. You know, yeah, it's, it, it's not even about that. It's not about the green paper. It's what that provides as far as life goes. You know, what's, what's certain is uh, we don't know what day is our final day here on this earth. But what is certain is that tomorrow is one day closer. Yep. So what will you do with that day? What will you do to make it a great day? You know, um, I was reading in Genesis today. I guess I'm going to hit politics and religion. Um, you know, the very first thing that if you're uh, of the Christian faith, that God tells you is in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And uh, the earth part made sense to me. But I never really thought about it. He created heaven. He didn't just occupy it. He took time and he created it. And uh, we all have our different beliefs on our relationship with God, but I, most of us believe uh, or refer to him as our heavenly father. And not only did he create the heaven and the earth, but he created everything on it including us. And if He is our Father, then we are His children. And you have to ask yourself, take, think about your earthly parents. Do we tend to take some of the traits that they have? Of course we do. So why not Him? Why not take some of the traits that He has? And if He can create heaven in a day, or earth in a day, what can you create in a day? You know, certainly he took some time to prepare those things. And so he was very uh, um, pro productive, if, if you read the first chapter of Genesis. But what can we create? Most of us just live the day, and the, we let the day live us, really. You know, we, whatever hits us, we just take. But, um, but we can create it, and we can decide. Every single day, I take a 3 by 5 card, and I write down 13 things that I do every day that I find to be essential. And then I write a few other things um, that, I, that I will put and orchestrate so that at the, if I get them all done, that that day, in my opinion, is splendid. It's amazing. It's fantastic. It's heaven. It's a portion of heaven for me. And I'll work on it. And so every single day when my head hits the pillow, I've created an amazing day. I've created a day that, that I can be honored with, that I can feel pleased by, that I can feel that I'm better, the world's better, because that day was created by me. And we have that power. And so when we see things like the secret, you know, bold statements were made in that. Bold ones that make you get all goosebumpy but also make you think, really? Anything and everything that I want? Well, what's your definition of heaven? You know, and my, my, my honest opinion is heaven isn't a place where we just have wings and pluck the harp on a cloud. <laughs> you know, and I certainly don't think that it's just if you have a quarter, if you're under the quarter of sins, you get to go. You know, no, we create, we, we, there's a, was a portion of that that comes from our doing as well. You know, the people that we develop into. That's how we become, are able to inherit those things. But we don't do that after this life. We do it during this life. This is the time, not later. And so, this is, our journey has already begun. We're all in the process of it. And, uh, and so, why not? Why not make it our very best? Why not give it our very best effort? I just realized it's nine o'clock. Do you want me to hit the other stuff, or do you want me to end? What's that? Okay. Good idea. Um, so I uh, so I just challenge you uh, to before you go to bed tonight to to create an amazing day. 
uh, and to continue to do that. And to look at prepaid legal services as an opportunity to fulfill a dream. All, this, all prepaid legal is is a vehicle. It's just a vehicle for you to accomplish the things that is your birthright to accomplish. I think Harlan Stone Cipher uh, quotes the Lord best when he says, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. You know, we were meant to live lives of abundance, not of despair. Not of, you know, life, you know, this is the best country in the world. And the very best. In the, not only the world, but the history of the world. And most of us accept life in the best country in the history of the world as work for 40 years, for 40 hours a week, throw in the commute, whatever that is, to retire on 40% of what you couldn't afford to live on in the first place. And then the average individual dies three years after they retire. To retire is death. I'll never stop working just on that alone. Um, nor should you, by the way. But that's really, is that really why we're here? Is that why he put so much effort into this planet and to the place hereafter? So that we could just do that? It doesn't make sense. It's so futile if that's the way we see it. Life was meant to be something magnificent. Something that is almost uncomprehensible. But the great men and women of the world, if they choose to, can take the uncomprehensible and make it easily comprehended. There's people that live lives that we could not even fathom as an average day. Simply because they made a decision to do so. So take the time and create the day that you want to create, the, day, the, the life that you want to live. There's a poem uh, that's in the book Think and Grow Rich. Um, I bargain with life for a penny and life would pay no more. But when at the end of the day when I plead with life I found that life would give anything that was in store. And you know, so here we are bargaining for a penny when uh, um, when life would have freely gave when life would have given us anything we wanted and so we've all kind of been duped and we've all kind of fallen into what everyone else fell into they lived a few years they worked a few years they breathed a few breaths and they died and I just have to think that there's more to it than that. Pull out of that. Realize that's the scam. Your, your friends, your dream stealers want to talk about a scam, but that's a scam. And I just ask you not to buy in to that scam and to live every day of your life and to live in a way that you deserve to, to live and to just take the action. Go home tonight and write down an amazing day. Don't go to sleep until you can look at a card or a piece of paper and say that is a day of a life worth living. And that can be your life if you so choose is my prayer and I thank you and I love you and I hope to be back again. Give yourself a round of applause. Be sure